Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have One Dark Window by Rachel Good appearing. So this is a faux loop book that I got in, I don't know, I'll show the bow mark in a minute. Um, so this is one of the second books we had in the same book, um, same box was we got two books. I love when we get two books in the box. It's actually quite nice. So this is the cover. We have this kind of... I don't know what colour green this would be. What do you guys think? What colour green would this be? And then, so, inside we have a bookmark, which was the October box. Then we have a an author letter. Right here we have some end pages that are different. Which I love. Foley always goes out in their books. And then... We have a cover. If you want to change it the other way, you can change it to this. So that is the dust jacket. And then let me show you the front cover or the hardback, which has this on it, which is very different. So at first, when I saw this, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like the book. So it was okay, this book, but I don't know if I'm actually going to, you know, like Karen reading. I was born with a fever and my do my blood dark as night. As an ancient or a mercy I can't say merciful spirit is trapped inside F with Spindle's head. She calls him the nightmare. He protects her, he keeps her secret, but nothing comes for free, especially magic. When F first meets a mysterious highway man on the forest road, she is thrust into a world of shadow and deception. Together they embark on a dangerous quest to cure the town of Blunder on the dark magic infecting it. As the stake heightens and their undeni undeniable attraction intensify, Epith is forced to face her darkest, deepest secret yet. The nightmare is slowly darkening, taking over her mind, and she might not be able to stop him. And I can't remember. I don't think this book was not signed. Um, but I think it does. Yeah, like each chapter had this line on it, which I find pretty cool. But yeah, the book was not signed. Because we had, our second book was also, it was signed, it had full coverage, everything. <clears throat> if you look at my other one, you can. So this is actually part of duology as well, so there is a second book coming out of this. But I will probably will not be reading the second book anyway. <clears throat> so this is following a, um, following Esbeth Spindle, a survivor of a mysterious fever which left her with magical abilities. In Blunder hiding someone who has been who has had the fever intrusion and punished punishable by death. After surviving the fever, one is deemed to be tainted. So death always so awaits. As a result, Esbeth and her family are understandable wary, hiding her way from society. As well as hiding their capital crimes, as the uh, fever has marked Esbeth. Um, she has an ancient miracle spirit trapped inside her mind. The second, a legally sanctioned form of magic in Gillian's world, is stored with a full power of provoking cards, a deck of magical cards, with each card giving its bearer a different abilities. However, this magic also has a cost, and a creation of the deck providing its cards and, and their separations are plunged and plundered into the ruins, with mist of lightning crops and the driving people mad, as well as this ruinous fever. Elizabeth accidentally becomes embroiled in a dangerous quest to reunite the dark the deck and a free bun delve from the dark magic infecting it. The question is, will she be able to do so before this monster takes over her mind? Completely. Who knows? So I did like the idea of this book. It is quite interesting to like have this evolve. I wanted to give it a go. I do like giving books a go, but for some reason I could not get myself like, oh, interesting. Hmm. Kind of way. So it's easy to read, read with the characters I care about and the plot I was invested in. Gillian's writing is also kind of like undeniable beautiful. It was really good um, just reading the structure to it being done really magically. It definitely has some darkness and gothic allure. And it's kind of gives me a fairy tale feel, but not kind of Disney. Grim feel, you know? But none of these elements are particularly super lectic. This is the sort of book I would go look forward to kind of like a rainy day with a warm beverage for an afternoon of the darkest escapist. <clears throat> I am not sure if a dark fantasy exists as a sub um, but it's if someone's picking up this hope, picking up hoping an adult gothic horror novel, they are disappointed. 
it's not bad. I admit when I started One Dark Winter, I was telling it out to be a lot darker than it turns out. I had to adjust my expectations while reading it, and although I did end up kind of liking it, <coughs> sorry, over and all, I think it had to be prepared to know that in advance that it was more moderated read. However, I am still invested and I'm looking forward to the final installment, so it would all be totally worth reading out for me. So, like I said, I am debating whether to get the second book, but I don't know. I probably won't be. I'm really fussy with my books. Um, but I guess that is this whole book review. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.